This is the 16-inch MacBook Pro with the high-end M1 Max chip. Today, we're going to compare it with a 2019 8-core i9 Intel chip and see if it's worth it for you to upgrade to the M1 Pro or the M1 Max. Hey, my name's Jake, and I create content here to help solo creators on the go. I'm not normally a review channel for computers specifically. I normally do drones, photography, filmmaking equipment out in the wild of Alaska. But because Apple just released the M1 Max chip and because I've been using an i9 eight core from 2019 spec'd out a 16 inch laptop, I wanted to show and see if it's worth it for the upgrade if you do a lot of video work or photo editing work, uh, if, if this is worth it for you to upgrade to. So we're gonna do some speed tests, especially when it comes to editing in Final Cut Pro to show you the differences and you can make a decision on whether or not you need to go for the high-end version, which is what I did, or if you know the, the baseline version would work or even the 14-inch baseline version would work for you. When Apple released this year's MacBook Pros, the 16-inch, it's nice to finally have an SD card because no matter what kind of camera you use, most cameras work with SD cards. Uh, and it's really nice to be able to just slide this in there. It doesn't go very deep, but have it pop right up and be able to start working with the footage off the SD card. And the import off this SD card reader is really fast, especially if you're using UHS-2 cards. Another difference is they put the HDMI port back in. That's kind of nice. I don't know if I really, I think I would have rather had another Thunderbolt 4 port, but the HDMI will be nice. For me, I use a docking station where I edit most of the time. So this just gets hooked up to an external monitor through the docking station and kind of put aside and I use my main monitor. And of course they reintroduced MagSafe, which I loved MagSafe. I never understood why they got rid of it because the MagSafe is such a nice way to attach and detach the power cable. And it's so much safer, especially if you have a house with kids like I do it will save you a lot of grief and a lot of pain. But beyond all the specs, the real question I had is, is it worth it for me to upgrade? And the biggest reason for me to upgrade to something is if it saves me a significant or substantial amount of time. So what we're gonna do is check and test how fast this can import and transcode footage, which is generally 10-bit 422 from an A7S III in XABCS and how fast this can do the exact same thing. So what I did in this test here was import 41 gigabytes for a project I had shot and then transcode it to ProRes so I can work with it in Final Cut Pro, which is my editor of choice. And the results there are really surprising to me. The M1 Max laptop took just about nine minutes, right about nine minutes to import, transcode, and be ready to start using and editing 41 gigabytes of footage. Where the 2019, i9 took 29 minutes to import and transcode the same exact footage off the same exact hard drive. That's a big difference. And not only that, but another big difference is that the fans for the 2021 laptop have yet to kick on. And I have done a whole bunch of editing with this. I've done a whole bunch of rendering and exporting and live streaming with this. And I still have yet to hear the fans kick on. Now I did go into the battery settings and put it on high because I wanted to see the max performance of this. And so far, yeah, they still haven't kicked on. Whereas this, it only takes about 30 seconds before the fans ramp up to the highest speed possible and work hard to keep the laptop cool for the rest of the time. That's all great. When you come to edit, the editing is pretty much based on you, how fast you can edit. So what I've done is put a the same exact project on both of these, the same, everything is exactly the same. And what I'm gonna do now is render and then export it. And we're gonna see how long each one of these computer takes. This is a 12 minute, 46 second file that's in 4K on the timeline. There's a mix of A7S III, which is 422 10-bit, and some GoPro at 5.3K, and some Action 2 footage from the new action camera from DJI that's at 4K. There's some color correction, there's some titles, and a few other little adjustments here or there. We're gonna see how fast each one of these can render that entire timeline and have it ready so that then we can export it. So we will, let's see, start here. I need one more finger and go. They're both going. Now we sit and wait to see which one's faster. Well, not which one's faster. Pretty sure that one's gonna be faster. 99.99% .99 sure that one's gonna be faster. The question is how much faster? Because a big part of this decision for me is based on the fact of how much time is it gonna save me over a week when I'm working on client projects, when I'm even working for stuff here on YouTube, but mostly 
If I can gain a few hours back each week over the course of a year, that's gonna make it very much worth my while to get a new computer as opposed to sticking with the old one. Uh, which computer? That'll be more based on your budget and your needs, but I think probably the 14 inch will be fine for a lot of people and definitely the base model 16 inch will be fine for most people unless you work with a lot of higher res stuff, 8K, and raw or log files from some of the higher end cinema cameras or even Canon's log is a pretty taxing one as well. The fans are just starting to ramp up on this. It's been a minute or just about a minute and the fans are starting to come up to speed. So I think we'll fast forward the rest of this and see how long it takes for this to render and then how long it takes for that to finish rendering. Getting close, this one's almost done. This one's a little over halfway. Fans are running full bore on this thing. Fans have not kicked on on this at all yet. So we go five minutes, 56 seconds to render a 12 minute, 46 second 4K uh, timeline. That's pretty impressive. This is maybe about two thirds of the way done, it looks like. So we'll just let it run and see what how much longer it takes. So it looks like we're coming up on the end over here, just about there. I'm just waiting for the little uh, check mark to say it's all done. Definitely taking a bit longer. Looks like about 25%. It's definitely taking a bit longer. Looks like so far a little over two minutes two minutes longer to render this. This took two and a half minutes longer to render the exact same 12 minutes, 46 second timeline. So now let's do an export test and see how long each one of these takes to export that same 12 minute, 46 second 4K timeline that we just rendered and how long it takes to export from here onto the desktop. Both of these are running off an identical SanDisk one terabyte SSD. So everything is the same. They're both running the same version of Final Cut Pro, both the same operating system. And here we go. So we're a minute, minute and 30 in. Fans are starting to ramp up on this one again already. So far, this one has yet to have any fans turn on at all in anything I've done. So there we go, four minutes, 42 seconds to export a 12 minute, 46 second 4K timeline, which ends up being a little over four gigabytes. So not bad, not bad. The fans have not kicked on on this at all yet. And that's, that's the thing that's one of the most impressive things to me is that it is that fast uh, and in working that much harder or working that much more efficiently and the fans have yet to kick on. This is uh, not quite halfway done yet. So we'll come back to it. there we go. Both of them have rendered and exported this. Uh, the rendering was closer than I thought, but the exporting, this took twice as long as this one did, which is a huge factor when you're working with footage and you're rendering and exporting and then sometimes making corrections and re-exporting and re-exporting. One of the questions you might ask is why transcode the media? Because on this machine, if I want to do smooth playback, I basically have to transpo transcode the media. Otherwise the playback's really jerky and you can see that here on comparing the GoPro and action footage. It's it's real stuttery, doesn't play back smoothly. If I hit the space bar, it's okay, but it still will drop frames from time to time. And that's just on some pretty basic uh, imagery. Whereas over here, when I'm skimming on this one, it is uh, much smoother and much, much quicker on the playback. And that's without any transcoded media. So of course the question comes down to, should you upgrade if you're using a 2020 or a 2019, you know, spec'd out or, or even relatively high spec? 16 inch MacBook Pro or anything less than that? Should you upgrade to something like the M1 Max or the M1 Pro 14, 16 inch? That's a great thing. The performance is not really gonna differ. The only big difference is gonna be the battery life. This has a lot more battery life than the 14 inch. And the answer to that is for me, it's absolutely worth it because this is how I make the income for my business and for my family. My time is really valuable because that's the one thing I can't change. So aside from my rather 
uh, slow editing skills to be able to import and render transcode and export footage in 30 to 40% faster overall over the course of a week that adds up to about six to eight hours of my time and that's a big deal that's almost an entire day's worth of work that I or a time that I can save myself to be able to go out and film other things and post videos on YouTube or whatever it is um, that's a huge amount of time saving so that makes it totally worth it for me now for you, that might not work out the same. You may not make your income. This may not be your full-time job and I totally understand that and get it. But if you do have the budget and you feel like an upgrade would be worth it, or maybe you, you know, make some side income with it and some time added back to your schedule would be nice. Then the base model 14 inch or the base model 16 inch is going to give you really similar results unless you start working with really high end footage. The reason I went for the high end is I do work with Red Raw and I do work with other log formats from time to time. And so having that extra horsepower specifically to work with some of those formats and, and I work with ProRes and ProRes Raw a lot, that makes it a huge uh, time saver for me. For anything else, you're gonna see really similar performance. If you shoot with a Sony mirrorless or even Canon mirrorless, you're gonna see very similar performance across the board until you get into the higher codecs or 8K and the raw formats. That's when you're gonna notice a big difference upgrading to the M1 Max chip and especially the higher end M1 Max chip. Beyond that, the most important thing you can do is the chip is great, get 32 gigs of RAM if you can. 16 will work, that's what has been in this and it's been okay, but 32 will definitely work better. And honestly, because I edit and put all my footage on external hard drives to take that off of the system drive, I only need between a 500 and one terabyte hard drive. And so that's all that's in this one. This has just had a 500 gig and that has worked great for me for two years. There are of course links in the description to the base model 14 inch, the base model 16 inch, and the high end 16 inch. And if you use those, they're affiliate links, so I'll get a small commission off that. No extra cost to you, but it definitely helps me do things like this and the other things that I run around Alaska with. If you have questions about this specifically or things you want me to try, if it's something I can do in a future video, let me know in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer those questions. To find out some of the other gear I use when I'm running around the state of Alaska, you can click or tap right there. I put together a short video playlist about some of my favorite stuff that I use as a solo creator. Other than that, you can join me on my live stream Wednesday nights at 4 p.m. Alaska time, 8 p.m. Eastern. If you have specific questions and you want to have an actual conversation with me about your questions, I will see you again soon in the next video. Cheers.